What do you think are the biggest challenges to families at this present economic state of the world? In this episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by financial advisor and dad of four, Joseph Peck, where amongst other things, he tells us what we can do to teach our children financial literacy. Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Lived experience podcasts about mental health, parenting and marriage on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I feel underdressed. You've worn a tie. It's for my day job. I, I actually hate ties. I hate them, but I, I work in finance and investments. So I wear them anyway. No, it's important. I just feel very underdressed and scruffy. I've just come in from the garden, painting the deck, doing sort of oh, nice. standard nice. dad chores. I've just started working for some NFL analysts. Oh, wow. So I'm having a crash course in NFL, which I know nice. absolutely nothing about. Although I feel like I know a lot more than I did, say, a week ago. So did you say you're in Arizona? Yep, Phoenix. What's the sort of closest NFL side that you would put to you? We've got the Cardinals here. So right. I'm personally, I'm from Michigan, so I'm a Detroit fan. So I like, I'm, I'm a fan of the Detroit Lions. Okay. But since I'm lived here at Phoenix, he roots for the, the Cardinals. Are the Cardinals any good? If I watch more football, I can let you know. But I'm not, I'm not a huge football guy. I'm actually more of a hockey fan. But oh, recently okay. with being a dad and career and then starting to go on these podcasts uh, and doing this stuff, no time for sports these days. No, so. no. I, I can see with any sort of sport, it's a total rabbit hole. I think it's just maybe, and this is a big generalization, just being a man and obviously playing lots of sports to the past, I'm, like, I'm really interested. I want to find out what's so amazing about the Kansas City Chiefs. And right. It's a lot to learn. Just for the, for the benefit of my uh, listeners, can you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. My name is uh, Joseph Peck. Please call me Joe. Unless you're mad at me, then you can call me Joseph. <laughs> the hairs in the back of my neck stand up. I feel like mom's yelling at me. I'm a father of four boys. So there's a lot of testosterone in my house at all times. It's like the UFC and WWE constantly. There's a lot of noise, uh, a lot of rough housing. But I'm um, ex-military. I was in the military as soon as I graduated high school for 10 years. I did a couple of different jobs in service. And I got out and started working on uh, finance and sales. And I've been in finance and sales ever since. And now I'm a uh, uh, vice president at my broker and a financial advisor. So I run a book of business. And yeah, father of four. That's the main hurdle that's, that I have. That's it's, impressive. What ages are they? Nine as of two days ago. All right. And then seven, four and a half, and three. Yeah, sorry, I put you on the spot there. I've got three. I've got a do an eldest daughter, and then I've got two boys. But I take my hat off to you, four boys. My wife says, how do people do it with any more than two boys? I don't know. That, to me, just yeah. sounds. I, I always tell people, thoughts, prayers, whatever it is that you do, send them my, my wife's way because <laughs> she needs all of it that she can take. She's the only female in the house. So she's so. definitely outnumbered. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Our dog is a girl, so she's okay. got her dog. That's about it. Yeah. For me with boys, it's just the constant eating. They're just net that just eat and eat and eat. It's just like our sort of our weekly shop bill has gone on massively. My nine year old, since he was five years old, he's eaten an entire pizza by himself. Really? Ever since he was five. So if we do pizza night, it's over a one hundred dollar extra easy. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Which the conversion, I think that's probably about seventy or eighty pounds. That's a fairly expensive family night out. Would you say being in the military has helped your, your role as a father? Absolutely. I think that learning discipline and habits and having a, a formula to follow ever since I was in the military helped me create those habits as a father, helped me instill those habits and that kind of discipline in my children as well. And I've been a father since I was 20 years old. We had our first child at 20, I'm sorry, 21, and she was 20. So ever since I was 21, I've had a kid. Ever since um, I was very, very young in the military. So staying in the military and still instilling a lot of good habits in my son. As a dad, you don't have a lot of moments where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm doing something right. You only get them pretty few and far between. But I walked past my son's room the other day, and he was doing push-ups. And as soon as he stood, did, was did, done doing push-ups, he grabbed a Rubik's Cube and started doing a Rubik's Cube. And I felt like I was raising a little super soldier from like RoboCop or from Starship Troopers. And I was like, okay, I'm doing something right, giving yeah, him some good are. habits and training. If he's doing exercise without your, uh, your encouragement, that's impressive. Yeah, I'd, that, it does sound good. 
Oh yeah. I mean, we live on about uh, just about an acre and a half out here in uh, Arizona and they'll take their bike helmets and they'll put a bunch of rocks and helmets and they'll just do farmer's carries down the fence line and back. So oh, yeah. I see these things and I go, okay, I'm giving them good habits. Something is going well. So that's good. Your job is you're a financial advisor. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. What do you think are the biggest sort of challenges to families at the moment, this sort of present economic state of the world? So that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that because if there's anything that I think families should be focusing on, especially fathers that run their households and things like that, even mothers that run their households, if they're going to teach their kids anything to try to segue them into the real world as they become adults and things like that, budgeting. Budgeting is super important. Having a family budget and then just knowing the basics of how money works in finances. So my Patreon is called Faith, Fatherhood, and Finances. Talk about faith because I'm, I'm very religious. Talk about fatherhood, what it's like to be a dad, and then talk about family finances, right? And I'll give you an example. I had my truck and we were getting rid of like a bunch of furniture and a bunch of different trash. And I was driving to the dump with my oldest son. I think he was about seven and a half at this time. This was only a year and a half or two ago. And we give him money for chores that are outside of the norm, cleaning up the acre and a half, whatever it is, right? So outside of the norm chores, we will pay him for other stuff, excessive landscaping and stuff like that, moving rocks and things like that. And he had about, I think, $17. And my wife called me and she said, hey, you're on your way to the dump. They don't take card, this dump that you're going to. They only take cash. And my wife knows I don't ever really carry a lot of cash on me. That's not a professional uh, thing or a conspiracy thing. I just don't like carrying yeah. cash. And she goes, do you want to turn around and come back and get money? I said, Malachi, that's my oldest, said, how much money do you have on you? He goes, 17. I go, the dump is going to cost 14. Nope, I'm good. At that moment, I took the opportunity and said, all right, we're going to discuss how loans and debt work. And long to the short of it is I had my son give me his money. We paid for the dump and then I went and I got a 20 and I gave him his money back with interest. And I nice. explained to him, daddy needed money. You had that. So I asked you for it. You gave it back to me when I was done with it. I gave it back to you and you made money on it because I needed it from you. So I gave you even more on top when I returned it to you. So I taught him a very basic loan and debt with interest principle. We didn't go into the math of saying, Malachi, you're seven and a half years old. I'm going to give you 10%. Find out that 10%. This yeah. is how much. I didn't go over any of that time frames, and I did not get into the weeds with him. But I did cover a very basic principle. You're giving me money. I'm going to give it back to you, and I'm going to pay you on top of that because you had the opportunity to give me money. So I taught him a very basic finance principle, right? And I think if families can learn these things, they can budget appropriately for the current state of the world, and they can teach the next generation this is how debt works. This is how equities work. The next generation will be very well off. But the issue that we run into all the time is just that nobody knows these things, right? Whatever opinion people are based off of, in America, we have the big student loan crisis, right? Yep. Whatever opinion somebody is of, which is either the government should forgive it or they need to pay it back to opposite sides of the spectrum, whatever it is, both sides can agree that anybody that took out the student loan or anything like that, like that should know exactly what the yeah. expectation is, regardless if you think the government should take care of it or not. It w this crisis could have been avoided had we educated people as to how debt works before they uh, went into it, right? And so the finances and understanding these terminology and how this world works, I think, would really benefit families a lot. You're right. I think what you've taught your son there is an incredibly valuable life skill because that's certainly nothing that I think children. Even in what we would call secondary school, I suppose you call high school. If my wife's a teacher, I don't know whether or not the curriculum's changed that much, but I don't know how real world they make money. Part of the problem, I think, isn't that you're that not enough money's coming in. It's just that it's a leaky bucket. There's just, right. you don't have any structure. You, if you don't know what your incomings and outgoings are, then I think it's dangerous. And yeah, and I think that's a really sensible way of teaching children accountability. Because I think a lot of people get overwhelmed by mortgages and interest rates. And it's, right. it's a bit scary. And if, if math wasn't your strength at school, it certainly wasn't mine, then you probably think, oh, I don't know what to do. But I suppose if from the age of eight or nine, because what the example you've just given, I think most children would understand the concept of that. 
I think that's really sensible. Right. No, and, and that's the purpose of it, right? And that's one of the, I, I've been calling it on the other podcasts I've been going on, I've been calling it my holy crusade, right? What I'm looking to do is because I'm a veteran myself also, I'm looking to go around and tour different educational platforms, high schools and universities. I want to teach financial literacy. And I even want to help transitioning veterans that are getting out of the service and separating. I want to set them up for success, right? How does this budgeting work? How do these different money principles work? Not only, like you said, is it not taught in high schools, but it's not taught in universities either. And these simple skills, I think you made a great point with the mortgage, right? So many people have no idea actually how it works. They pick up the phone, call, they get their credit pulled. All of a sudden, they are have to come up with closing costs for 7000 They buy a house and they're, hey, I have a house. Okay, who's my lender? Okay, wait, where do I send? What is my payment of $2,000? Yeah. How much of that is principal and, and what is interest? And how did you calculate that? So many people will literally end up with a house, excited they have a house, not knowing anything about how the... Yeah. How much exactly. do I actually owe and how right. long will it stay this amount before exactly. it suddenly jumps up to some terrifying amount? And all that stuff, and this isn't to talk ill about any lenders or anything like that. That's not my point here. My point, though, is just to say if we can educate people to how this kind of these kinds of things work, and if we can actually show them the very simple math it takes, the problem is that nobody even... Everybody, like you said, thinks it's super complicated. Oh, I can't figure out these interest rates. I can't figure out this yeah. math. The math is actually simple. We just need to sit down and talk about it. That's all it actually takes. My father passed away a couple of years ago, and my mum's dad had to take on a lot of things that I think were his responsibility. I imagine financial, the car. And I imagine it was probably quite daunting. Until you actually think, I'm totally within my capabilities to do this. And I think I like the term you said, financial literacy, because I think... There's no, that should be such an obvious thing to stop children are young so that when they become adults, I should never assume that an adult knows what they're talking about when it comes to money. Well, right. And, and this is the thing that frustrates me is that it can be as simple. You can start this as young as multiplication tables, right? So compound interest. This is something that I talk about all the time because if you can start saving money for retirement uh, and for your older age early, you're going to be better off than when you start late. Yeah. And you can teach this principle as soon as multiplication tables are memorized. So I'll give you an example. If everybody watching and if you also, James, want to go ahead and take out your phone, go to your okay. calculator, okay? Type in 0 .01. And this is the question and this is the game. Would you, James, rather have a penny today? Uh, I'm sorry. Would you rather have a million dollars today or a penny doubled Every day for 30 days. Which one so, would you take? So I put 0 0.01. Correct, in the calculator, 0 yeah. 0.01. So would you rather have a million pounds today or uh, a penny doubled every day for 30 days? I don't want to ruin the lesson, but I know the answer, I think. Right. I think it's well, up. yeah, because it's a trick question, right? So yeah. most people would say, well, I'll take the million. But if you take that 0 0.01 and you just put multiply it by two, so you doubled a penny. Okay, so now you should have 0 0.02 in your calculator for everybody at home listening as well. This is the power of compound interest. You can teach this as soon as a child understands that multiplication, if I double one, it becomes two. And if I double two, it becomes four. If they can figure out, if you can teach them multiplication to know, where they know doubles, you can teach this. So on the second day, you should have 0.04. If you click it again, the equal sign again, you should have 0 0.08. We're three days in now. So let's go to 10 days. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Y'all should have about $10.24. Now let's go to 20 days. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You should have $10,485.76. Uh, yeah. Compound interest, nothing happens until the very end, right? So now let's go to 30 days and watch what happens on days 27, 28, and 29. So day 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. By the end of 30 days after a penny doubled every day, you have over $10 million. Yeah, that's clever. And actually, I think- show kids this, yeah. kids get really excited about money, right? They're like, I've got $5, I've got five pounds, I'm rich, right? I can go buy a Hot Wheels and a stick of bubble gum, right? You know, kids get excited about that. And if you can just teach them what a double is, you can show them the power of compound interest and teach them this very basic principle. Yeah, and actually, you know what? I think you make a very good point that is actually a fairly good maxim for life. 
when you're trying to achieve anything, whether it's a physical goal or a mental goal, it doesn't happen to the, to the end. It's like the whole bamboo concept. For years, bamboo does nothing. And then in the last couple of weeks, it grows exponentially way faster than other trees. So basically, like money, if you can invest in and, and don't want the instant gratification of money in your plan now, absolutely, it, it, it pays a lot. It pays dividends. Yeah, that's a really good way of actually highlighting it because I think that, that teaches the lesson perfectly. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I like to equate, like you said, to really equate this to everything else in life, especially the things that are difficult, right? You don't necessarily have to double every day. But if you, as a person, let's say it's a fitness goal, let's say it's an educational goal, let's say it's a personal goal, a prayer goal, religious goal, whatever it is, if you try to change half a percent every day, keep it simple. I, I'm not going to increase by a, whatever I'm doing by 1% or 2% or 10%. I'm going to be a little bit better every single day. If you try to be a little bit better half a percent every single day, you're a completely new person by the end of that year. Yeah. You are a completely new person. So start small. And over time, these small habits, these small changes, they compound. And you can see, find a lot of success in one, two, 10 years time. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think it shows to me that actually the two things you need for any level of success, whether it's parenting or financial, it's just patience. It's just have the patience right. to not be distracted by the shiny objects. We're not right. very good at waiting. And I think our society is probably a lot worse than previous generations because there's so many distractions and we do right. all want it now. We're not prepared to, I want a best-selling monetized podcast and YouTube channel now. I, I train Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I'm fairly average. Half the appeal to it, and like anything worth doing, is that it can take 15 to 20 years. Some people just don't have the mindset or the cork ethic to think, I just can't. And I suppose it's the same with parenting, taking your kid to football practice, doing the bedtime stories. It's only really until they are adults that you will see whether or not, why that work was worth doing. Right. right. And you know, the thing is, is that if we equate this to money, we can equate it to parenthood, whatever it is. Would you rather be in the same spot you're in 15 years or would you rather be in a better spot? So do these small things, right? I really hope you got some of this podcast. And as I said, I created it because I want to set up an online community to support people, specifically dads and specifically dads like myself, who often struggle with their mental health. If you're going through or have gone through a mental health issue and you found a way to make your life slightly easier and you want to share that story, please contact me. And I know it's a massive ask because no one's got any spare time, but I'm really trying to get this podcast out there so if you have two minutes to leave me a review on Apple Podcast or Spotify, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care of yourself. Hey, Dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five-minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers, and guides.